Hello, hello, my lovely angels. This is your girl Sam back with another episode of The Sim Squad. Hi! <laughs> so, um, I'm finally like counting down to all my summer fragrances, and I just realized, like, you know, there were a lot of OG perfumes from the Middle Eastern brands that uh, I did not have. Um, so I thought why not include them first and then make a summer list. I know you all are gonna be like Sivine, <laughs> it's summer and you're not, you've not come up with a summer list but don't worry we have a lot of months to go for summer so uh, hopefully first week of July you'll have the entire summer thing. So I'm gonna do one Latafa summer fragrances and the rest of the Middle Eastern fragrances and those are gonna be long lists because Living in Dubai, mostly, we have summer fragrances, right? And then the evening wear and the Udi perfumes and strong perfumes. So let's start with the first. Okay, so <laughs> I didn't tell you what it is. So we are doing the entire Club de Nui range. Now I have, uh, I think, uh, five of them, which are meant specifically for women. I know Milestone or was it? No, Siage. That one is also supposed to be for, it's supposed to be unisex, but that's leading too heavily to masculine. So I've skipped that and I have five. Three OGs and two um, not so OGs. They're the recent ones. So let's start with the first one, which was the Club de Nuit Milestone. No, wait, sorry. It's not the Club de Nuit Milestone. It's the Club de Nuit, <laughs> the original perfume. So all of them have this uh, thingy with um, like a stud. So all the packaging is like that. And... I got all the 100 mls because I knew I'm gonna like these perfumes. They were on my list for a long time, but uh, I was like uh, taking it easy and I was like, okay, these perfumes are gonna be there forever, so I'm not gonna like, you know. Now these perfumes like got viral. They were liked by everybody. And the initial three they released, I believe those were like very easy grab perfumes where everybody would just like it. They were like people pleasers, the uh, commercial perfumes, you know. And the bottle is like pretty nice. I like bottles like this, see? Now this is like a bottle that I would like to keep on my vanity because it's simple, it's nice. This thing doesn't dangle, although I wish it did, but it's fine. Now this perfume is compared to your Coco Mademoiselle by uh, Chanel. And I have that perfume. And that perfume has been catching dust on my shelf for the longest time. I don't even know if it's good now to use or not, but it's just there. Let me get that for you as well. So here you go. I've used up quite a bit of the Coco Chanel actually, Coco Mademoiselle, sorry. But um, I don't know, I just don't gravitate towards it. It's like a very like, okay, you know. Oh my gosh, okay. Okay, they're nearly the same. But Coco Mademoiselle has uh, some ripe fruit. It's more fruity, whereas this one, it's more fresh. It's fruity, but it's perfumey fresh. You know, this one is like fruity fresh, but they're super identical. I mean, I mean, I know this was meant to be a dupe for Coco Mademoiselle, but like, it's really close. The Coco Mademoiselle is definitely more elevated. It is. It, it smells more bougie and I don't know how to explain it, but to an untrained nose, they will think it's the same perfume. But like definitely this one is a little more synthetic than this one. Like the fruits and everything are richer in the Coco Mademoiselle. Oh, I might start using this perfume again. <laughs> I'm liking it now. So let me tell you the notes for this. So the top notes are orange, grapefruit, bergamot and peach. The middle notes are rose, jasmine, geranium and lychee. And the base notes are patchouli, vanilla, musk and vetiver. So everybody who didn't like patchouli fragrances, they kind of got repulsed by the Coco Mademoiselle. But the patchouli is like done well. It's not like a... I don't know. I don't know. I don't think anybody would dislike this patchouli. You know the patchouli I dislike is in combination with very sweet notes like the uh, angel, the star. Although I think I should get that now because I had smelled it like ages ago, ages ago and I was like nope, nope, nope. That patchouli... Dirty patchouli with that extremely sweet praline or whatever there is in that was like look obnoxious but like I don't know let me just try that perfume as well yeah as far as I can say these are sisters they're not uh, exact clones but uh, it's definitely in the same um, DNA as a matter of fact like for an untrained nose it'll smell the same Club de Nuit has uh, 4.14 on Fragrantica which is a lot like which means like mostly people like it let me spray it on my hand and smell it. Now Club de Nuit is not a new perfume so it's not gonna smell revolutionary or something. I mean this uh, the Coco Mademoiselle uh, DNA was done by like almost all the brands so uh, you know it's not something like um, 
unconventional and it's going to wow people but people will definitely like it it smells very pleasant and nice on my skin it's smelling a little greener like on my skin i can smell more of uh, the flowers and on this trip i can smell more fruits <laughs> i mean yeah for the price go for it i mean it's even i think uh, less than 100 dirhams which is like i think you're getting it for like 25 dollars or less and for 100 ml, ml and the beautiful bottle like this is the club dinaway women by the way i i actually like it i'll probably keep this in the office and use it daily on daily basis because it's not going to bother anybody and it's going to be one of those perfumes that are like liked by everybody so it's not going to offend anyone it's a classy woman and who is sophisticated and nice and very well mannered very well good miss goody two shoes kind of perfume you know i i call those perfumes like miss goody two shoes this is that by the way this is like really really long lasting it like stays on the skin for more than six hours on the clothes maybe like eight hours plus and the projection for this is like two feet to three feet which is not bad at all like i would give this perfume like a seven out of ten because yeah it is a nice perfume when I'm smelling it, I know I will grab this a lot. I know I'm going to gravitate towards this to wear it on a daily basis, especially in summer because this is definitely a summer fragrance. It's not even like spring or autumn or anything. This is like a summer fragrance, daytime, and it definitely will make you feel cooler and lighter. And it smells like a light linen dress, you know, like that kind of feel. And the celebrity I would give this to would be Kate Winslet. You know how Kate Winslet is like... I think she would smell like this, you know, and yeah, this, yeah, that's Kate Winslet, you know. Like for some people, this perfume will be a little too vanilla, you mean? Not vanilla as in the note, but vanilla as in like too plain and boring. It's definitely a more, I'm not going to call it mature because it's not a mature scent. It is definitely vintage leaning because it is like a DNA that's done a lot. So you, when you smell this, you'll feel a little of that vintagey vibe. Regardless, it's still classy and vintage rules. So you know what? Go get this for yourself. So the next one I have is the Club de Nuit Intense. It's again in the same box. The packaging is exactly the same from the inside. But the only thing is, the good thing in this range is that all the perfumes like look exactly the same. Like look at that. The, pop, the perfume bottle of this is lovely. And this perfume... I was really impressed with this one. I think I came a little bit too late to the party because this smells very much like uh, your Keali Alexa. It doesn't smell like that. It has the same vibe. It's a little incensey as well. Like now we're talking. This is like this perfume is right up my alley. Now this is something when you wear it, people will ask you like, what are you wearing? Because this definitely smells different and it's more powerful, more seductive. It's kind of leaning towards being a clubby fragrance. But you know, like of a, a woman who wears dark clothes and wears red lipstick and she's very bold, has black hair definitely. Now, this perfume is compared to Noir de Noir and I do not know about this perfume. So I haven't smelled it. I don't know how it smells like, but people say it's, very, it's a very close dupe to that. On Fragrantica, it's got 4.13. I was a little disappointed because I thought it'll be, this will be like 4.2 and above. But still, anything above 4 is like a good thing for me on Fragrantica. The top notes for this are Rose, Saffron and Germanium. G Geranium. <laughs> Middle notes are Nutmeg, Pepper, Violet and Caraway. And the base notes are patchouli, vanilla, agarwood and amber. So that incensiness is coming from the agarwood, which is oud. And you can smell it. And this is like the incensey one, which is uh, not the barnyard. Incensey one is uh, the bakhur, the one which burns. So it gives you that little smoky feeling. A smoke that, uh, an oud that burns and creates a sweet smoke. And that smoke is like incensey and sweet. But at the same time, then it has the spices and the flowers and everything and trust me this perfume oh my gosh like this perfume for me is like a definite 10 out of 10 and when i read the notes like if you imagine like rose saffron geranium like you know these sound like very heady uh notes but this is not heady at all this is definitely like a woman who dares to change in her limousine and switches from an office bus to a club lady you know like <laughs> changes in the in the What's wrong with my, what do I do? Like my imagination, like something is wrong with me, you know? Someone, sometimes I get, get like very perverted. And by the way, when I spray this perfume, I can't stop sniffing myself because it's a very addictive perfume. If you smell it once, you'll be hooked and you'll definitely buy this perfume. I mean, I don't see anybody not liking this unless you actually absolutely hate incense perfumes. 
imagine like an advert where a, a lady is like dressing up and wearing her red lipstick in a in a limousine set in the city where there are high rise and it's nighttime and then she stops outside an exclusive club and while everybody is standing in queue the bouncer just lets her in they're like you know <laughs> this perfume screams glamour and is not meant for the faint-hearted it is definitely strong it's going to project a lot and you will definitely be noticeable so if you're a wallflower skip this <laughs> i swear the last time i wore this i had worn it on my wrist to dry it and then i washed my hands and i washed the wrist as well because i was like okay let me like wash it off and see if it goes away it did not i could still smell it lingering on my skin so it's definitely really potent i've not tried it on white clothes and i would not want to because like i'm sure this is a stronger perfume and i don't want to straight stain my clothes for me, the weather and uh, daytime or not, it's uh, it's definitely any weather, but nighttime. You can wear this anytime, but during nighttime. It leans feminine, but I think anyone can pull this off. I think if you're a guy who's okay with smelling slightly feminine and like that incensey floral sense, you will like this one. The projection is six feet and the longevity is, again, six plus hours. So, uh, I mean, on the skin, it's going to stay like for a long time. For me, this perfume is like a 10 out of 10. And this again has like this slightly Eastern European vintage kind of uh, feeling to it. So uh, the celebrity I'll give this to would be uh, Sophia Lauren, like gorgeous. Like that woman, I mean, first of all, every time I imagine Sophia Lauren, like in my head, she's always wearing a black dress. I don't know why. A black fitted dress, like fitted and it's, uh, what do you call it? Sleeveless? Yeah, sleeve sleeveless with like a sweetheart uh, neckline and everything and like, oh my god, Sophia Lauren, like oh, epitome of like class and you know. So yeah, this perfume reminds me of Sophia Lauren. Now, the next one is the Milestone. I quite like this bottle. By the way, again, had the diamond thingy on it and the same thing repeats over here. And you can see the juice inside from the ring thingy. I really like these bottles, like on the vanity. Like this is like for me, like good classy packaging, you know, like this looks nice on your vanity. Now this perfume is classified as a woody floral musk. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, I'm so sad that I did not wear these perfumes when they were released. If I tell you, I was a lot into designer fragrances. I was gravitating towards my favorite uh, uh, designer was Jean-Paul Gaultier. So you can imagine the kind of perfumes I liked, you know, like the original, the classic, uh, the fragile, the, you know, the one which came in the snow globe kind of thing. That was one of my all-time favorite perfumes which got discontinued, unfortunately. But like all these local perfumes from Emirates, like from Dubai and everything, I don't know why, I never gave them a chance. And in all seriousness i really regret it because these perfumes are like so amazing especially these three like this one milestone like it's giving the elixir run for its money because this one is supposed to be duping the um, creed milestone now, I, I have not smelled that perfume so i don't know how it smells like but this one is definitely a freshie it has notes of sea notes red fruits and bergamot the middle notes are violet white woods and sandalwood and the base notes are musk ambroxan and vetiver this is definitely a unisex it gives me the vibes like uh, i don't want to say fahrenheit because i hate that smell you know like the, the you remember that perfume fahrenheit like everyone was wearing it during summers or the aqua di geo but the male or the no sorry the female one this smells very much like that it has that aquatic note which was very unique back then but now it's like a very common uh, note and everybody knows it. Like when you smell it, like you definitely smell beach, you know. Now this perfume is a little unique to me because I normally don't lean towards uh, sea notes or salty notes. But there are some perfumes that do it really well, like the Kenzo, the Wor World Power and the Solar by um, Olympia Solar by Paco Rabanne. Those were like done well, the salt notes, sea notes and everything. And this is like no less it's beautiful but i think you know what it would depend on your skin chemistry as well because uh, anything with um ambroxan and musk it interacts with your skin chemistry and uh it changes but i think that's beautiful 
in Dubai it's like already like 45 degrees or so and this is one of the perfumes that calm me down and I really like it like think of think that you just came back from a swim on the beach and then you sat down on the beach and the wind is still carrying the salty uh, sea breeze and your skin is like uh, a bit salty and a bit sticky but then you're wearing a perfume that's a little musky and ambroxany and then you are slightly warm and you are you get like a box of uh, uh, the melon and berries and then you eat that at the beach and you know that fresh feeling you'll get when you eat that melon and it smells like that just imagine the sea breeze like your musk and your natural body scent when you come out from the beach and then the melon and the berries it smells like that this is only meant for hot weather like i think if you wear this in winter it'll just be very cloying and weird so like stick to summer because like this will interact really well with the sun and you know when the sun stays on your clothes for too long on on, on you for too long it's your clothes start smelling like the sun i don't know if you know that smell or not but that's like i guess the solar note that everybody talks about but this is like going to turn solar and very very beautiful this perfume does not have huge projection maybe like a two feet scent bubble and this is definitely unisex anyone can wear it i would give this a longevity of four to five hours because it'll start becoming a skin scent very fast and you might have to top it up but then if you're using it during summer you would have to top it up anyways because during summer your perfumes evaporate like much faster for me this is like an 8 out of 10 uh, and the celebrity I would give this to think Uma Thurman and uh, wearing a two-piece bikini and imagine that scene I told you like comes out of the water after, after the swim, sits on the beach, has melon <laughs> and she has like a musky sweet smell on herself, a perfume and smells like Uma Thurman. So the next two are a little challenging for me. The first one is the Club de Nuit Untold. And this is like clearly a dupe to, I think, uh, the Baccarat Rouge Extrait. Again, same, uh, uh, but the packaging and the bottle has the same thingy. This perfume. So now you know that I do not like the DNA of Baccarat Rouge anymore or the Extrait or anything that smells ozonic because I think that it's super overdone and I'm sick and tired of these perfumes. Same. <laughs> Right now, this is a little bit more expensive than the other line because it's brand new. So it ranges between $60 to $70. Like I know I got it like expensive because over here, these are like sold out and now they're selling at much higher prices. The top notes for this are saffron and jasmine. Middle notes are amberwood and ambergris and the base notes are fir, raisin and cedar. Come on, it's like the same notes. But this has a little bit of incense thing going on. So I think they added purposely a little bit of incense to turn it like slightly. You know, you're driving a car, but you don't make a full right, full left. <laughs> you make like a slight turn. This is that changing the lane, you know. So it is not like a direct replica of uh, Baccarat Rouge, but it is definitely in the same uh, family. As a matter of fact, it's sister. It's not even cousin. It's a sister, you know. First of all, the bottle. Doesn't this look like a nice Porsche club interior? Like it changes from blue-green to red and pink. I mean, it's like all the colors to purple. Like you literally get the entire rainbow, like, you know. And I think the bottle is stunning, stunning. It's really beautiful. The iridescence thing going on. I really like it. So when I opened this box for the first time, I didn't know that this was um, a dupe for Baccarat. So for some reason in my head, I thought this would be Gucci Rush. This would smell like Gucci Rush, you know. And I remember the Gucci Rush used to come in that concrete thing, the, like the solid bottle. And then there was another version that used to come in something like that. I think because of that, my brain went there, you know. So when I sprayed it and I smelled Baccarat Rouge, I was like, God damn it, no, you know. But yeah, it's nice, it's pretty, this is gonna stay on my vanity and I have a feeling that this needs a little bit of maceration because it is still feeling diluted, you know, like either you feel a perfume is too alcoholy or it's too diluted and that's when you realize that it needs maceration. You definitely don't smell uh, alcohol, but you smell that undi uh, the diluted thing going on. So I know I need to let this sit for a bit. That medicinal quality, by the way, of that saffron with the ambergris, I think it is uh, much, much less. It's barely noticeable. Like if you think, oh, 
dental office and then if you put your nose to it you will get that smell the spirit kind of smell but i think it's just there for a little while and i think it happens because of the mixture of saffron with alcohol i think it's not even the ambergris and that's when you feel that spirit you know of like when you before you get the injection yeah. <laughs> And you know that distinct burnt sugar smell that uh, Baccarat Rouge has, this doesn't have it. It's there, it's the sweetness of sugar but it is not the burnt sugar. The weirdest thing about this was like I sprayed it on my wrist and I... Because every day I'm spraying two perfumes, one on this arm, one on this arm, on the wrist and then on my uh, elbow, on, the, on my clothes. So I can smell on both, you know. And this one stayed for more than 8 hours and I was just like, what the, you know, because I know like Baccarat Rouge also lasts like forever but none of the dupes lasted this long so like I would say ignore the first three minutes when you spray this and then smell it and you don't even have to stick your nose like spray it on yourself and try not to <laughs> smell it you know because the initial whiff will give you the spirit kind of smell and then less than three minutes it'll go away and then I think you'll be very happy with this perfume now by the way by the way this remember this and when you try it Please remember this face. <laughs> so what I'm going to tell you now happened by accident. So it wasn't this mist, but I was wearing the Boom Boom Cream from uh, Sol de Janeiro. And then that's when I used this on my skin. And I was thinking, why is it smelling so different on, the, uh, on my dress and it's smelling so different on my skin? And that's when I realized that this combination this is the uh, Brazilian Crush 62 Cheriosa. Everybody knows how this smells like, right? Or do I need to tell you? So I thought, let me try these two together. The Cheriosa 62 with this. So beautiful. Okay, please, please, please. When you try these two together or this one with any other dupe of uh, Baccarat Rouge or with Baccarat Rouge, please remember me and you know let me know in the comments like have you tried this combination my goodness it is so go gorgeous but i think it works a little bit better when you have the boom boom cream on you and then you spray this on your skin and then you just start smelling so yummy like i know like this one will be like mass appealing this combination so this again this is all year round you can wear it during daytime you can wear it during evening i don't think there's a bar on it you can just do whatever you want uh it is definitely unisex it doesn't have a ma massive projection, it's like maybe 2 feet sun bubble but the lasting power is 8 plus hours. I don't know how they've managed the longevity to be that long. It is. It is like really really long. And with this one... Now I do not like the DNA of Baccarat Rouge. That's why I'm gonna give this not a 10 out of 10. Sorry guys. Uh, I'm gonna give this a 9 out of 10. Now you know for me to give a Baccarat Rouge dupe a 9 out of 10 is still a lot. So. I and the celebrity, I'm going to say, Tilda Swinston. She's very weird looking, but she's beautiful. Like I remember she played uh, Gabriel, the angel uh, in uh, Constantine. And um, you know, she had that weirdness about her, but she looked beautiful at the same time. And like she also has this androgynous thing going on like in her, like especially when she has like really short hair. But this to me, this perfume is like proper uh, Tilda Swinston, you know. She doesn't look like she's from this world. She looks like a ethereal creature and like come from somewhere above, you know. So yeah, this for me is Tilda Swinston. Now I don't know if they created the next one in haste or if they, um, I don't know. First of all, I was extremely annoyed because I ordered it and this showed up, right? So you would think this is a set of three perfumes. No. So this is what happened. They sent it in this big ginormous box. What a waste. Like I understand it's a new perfume and you're promoting it. It does have this nice, uh, um, what do you call it, watermark of uh, our mouth. But seriously, like that giant box for one perfume. Oh man. Now again, this bottle is super gorgeous. It's white and it has that iridescence thingy going on. I don't know if you can see or not. Maybe here. Look, yeah, over here you can see it. So it's, is this supposed to be a powdery, floral, fruity perfume? And it is supposed to be duping, guess who? Delina. So these guys were like the two most popular perfumes, which is Delina and BR540. They were like, let's replicate those, you know? 
it looks beautiful on the vanity. Now, I have a dupe of Delina, which I would say is the closest dupe, but it's not still perfectly duping it. And that is Lady Rosa by um, Mateen Martin. I had smelled this perfume ages ago and I immediately bought it because this was like for like $80 or $82 and uh, Delina is like for goddamn <laughs> $400. So I was like, yeah, that's not happening. And I bought this one. Now this is an actual Delina dupe. This on the other hand smells very similar. It has that rhubarb greenness, although I don't think it has rhubarb. It has that lychee sweet and tangy thing going on, the lychee shell, you know how it smells. The imperial or imperial, uh, this is 4.2, so people are loving this perfume. So maybe it's just me or maybe this perfume is to be uh, used in winter and appreciated in winter. Like I'm telling you in Dubai, it's so super hot, like ugh. Like so this guy is supposed to be top notes of uh, lychee, bergamot and nutmeg, middle notes of Turkish rose, vanilla, musk and peony. And the base notes of vanilla, cashmere, and cedar, and uh, incense. And it's supposed to be apparently the love child of Delina and Delina exclusive. I don't know how those two would smell together. I do like Delina exclusive more than Delina, but I do not own either of them now. Uh, if I get them in the small bo bottle, I'll buy it, but I am not so fond of this perfume. I do not like that DNA. I do not like rose done in a green, weird way. And that lychee, rhubarb and rose, like it just like, no. I know it's a very feminine perfume and I know men love that on women. Uh, Ali doesn't like this perfume, by the way. I made him smell Delina in a shop. I sm made him smell Lady Rosa. I made him smell this one and he was like, yuck, you know. He was like, this is way too sweet. But again, I think it, this will do really, really well in the winter. Like the initial spray because I was like all excited, you know how I am. <laughs> and I think all of us are like that. When you get the new perfume, you really want to smell it. So you go psh, 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 and then you stick your nose. Nearly killed me. I rolled my eyes so far back that I went into a different dimension altogether, you know. Like and I stayed there for like a good like 30 minutes or something, you know. I don't know. This perfume like nearly killed me. And after an hour or so, I started getting this bug spray kind of a thing. And I, I don't know. Now I'm going to review this perfume again because right now I cannot... Uh, understand this perfume like why would anybody wear this perfume it smells too bug spray cough syrupy and then you have the Delina thing going on so it's like all a mishmash but then people have given it 4.27 which is like a lot you know like on Fragrantica getting that kind of ranking is like and plus the bottle come on it's so beautiful like even if I don't use it I'm not gonna give this away because of the bottle you know and you know me the set collection so I'm gonna give this a good shake and i'm gonna stow it away and then i'll reopen this in winter so this is for me winter night time only it leans right now no no nobody no one should wear it projection like for sure this is like eight feet plus the longevity is also eight hours plus it's gonna stay and not leave your body i mean unfortunately <laughs> for me so i've not sprayed this on my skin i've just sprayed this on a strip so I'm going to rate this 4 out of 10 just because like at this point for me, this perfume is an absolute no. And you know who this is reminding This reminds me of Dolores Umbridge from Harry Potter. Yeah, if you know that character and you know that feeling, yeah, she wears pink all the time and she loves cats. But then she's like, like evil re reincarnated or something, you know, I feel this would be like how Dolores Umbridge smells like. Yeah, that is all for today. This is the five perfumes I've reviewed from the Club de Nuit. I think I might get the Sillage as well. Uh, why? Because uh, it's also some dupe of uh, Creed or something and Ali likes that uh, DNA. So I just I might just get that for him. And uh, tell me, have you tried any of these five perfumes? If you have, what do you think about them? Uh, and tell me, am I wrong with how I feel about the Imperial? Please tell me what you understand from it. And if you have tried this combination, the Cheriosa with the, the Untold, let me know. And, or if, if you have these two with you, try it and tell me how you feel. And of course, the OG3 will always remain now in my collection. And they will like, I know, they'll get used up really soon. And I will keep buying these bottles, like even if it finishes. As a matter of fact, I think I'll buy a backup and I'll keep it in the office. And I'll keep one side at home to wear it for myself. So that's it for today guys, I hope you liked the video. If you like my videos, please click like and subscribe and 
Uh, comment your favorite Armaf perfumes. So I'll see you guys next time. Smell good, smile, be happy, love one another and always, always smile for me. Love you. Bye.